And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NGW Shockwave. Kitty Omega defending that NGW world title tonight against Jungle Boy. But first, we have uh, some we have an incredible action-packed opening match between Ruby Riot and Zelina Vega. Riot trying to Riot looking to get a win here tonight. She's going to need one. She's most certainly going to need one. Right now, Ruby Riot stands at 0-3 and one no contest. But Riot is all looks all business tonight. She's looking to change it tonight as she steps in that ring with Zelina Vega, another wrestler who is 0-2 in this company. And when you talk about Ruby Riot, you have to talk about that fantastic match you had with Shayna Baszler about three months ago, two months ago. They went 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and they went pillar to post. It was an incredible match. The fans in NGW were on their feet from beginning to end. And here comes Zelina Vega. Vega really trying to make something happen for her NGW trajectory. So far, she's come up short. All right, I got to send a message out. Sorry about that. And Vega. Don't let the looks fool you. Vega is a very deadly and dangerous wrestler. She's aggressive. She just one of my, you guys know what I like to say. She's a pit bull. She stays on top of you. Unfortunately, she's not been able to find that winning formula yet here in NGW, but she's maybe looking to change that tonight. But I'll tell you what, Ruby Riot's a tough opponent to do that with. Riot starts with a grapple, downward spiral, dropping Selena Vega face first. And Riot picking Selena Vega up, snap suplex. And wait, they lock up. Selena Vega able to lock up with Riot. We have a look at that. Look at that arm getting wrenched there. But oh, a hammer lock. Zelina Vega able to reverse that. We have some chain wrestling to start to show off. Headlock from Riot. Riot showing Zelina Vega what she's capable of. Vega shoving Ruby Riot to the ropes, but Ruby grabs the ropes to break, uh, to, to, I guess, stop the momentum there. And that's okay because Vega just gets right back on it. Kick to the knee and a kick to the face. Riot having to roll outside the ring. Rolls outside the ring to recover. Zelina tried to hit a baseball slide. Riot was able to move out of the way. Zelina Vega with a slap followed by a strike. And it looked like a single leg takedown was attempted there, but Ruby Riot was able to counter. And now Riot has control of that arm, putting an elbow to the shoulder. Oh, and a knee from Ruby Riot after countering whatever that was Zelina Vega was attempting on the outside. Riot throwing Zelina Vega back into the ring, and she chases after her. And there's a kick to the head that Zelina Vega blocks and follows up with a Hurricane Rana. Zelina Vega back in control. And a running Hurricane Rana from Ruby Riot. Selena Vega getting picked up. Selena Vega on her feet and gets floored with a drop kick. And a stiff kick to the back from Ruby Riot. And another kick to the knee. And a Hurricane Rana DDT from Ruby Riot. Riot looking impressive here tonight. As is Lena Vega, though. We've seen them both pull off some fascinating, fantastic maneuvers in this match. But Riot in a beautiful judo hip toss from Zelina Vega. Vega tries for that, some kind of cutter there, some kind of cravat. Riot fights her off, but Vega kicks the knee in a DDT. Planning Ruby Riot. I, I've never seen this side of Zelina Vega. Vega's just more and more aggressive each time she gets in that ring. Today is no exception. And Ruby just doesn't look like she has an answer for Zelina Vega right now. This could not, this could be bad news for Zelina Vega. Another kick to the back. A kick to the midsection that Riot catches. I always thought it stood for Damien's Dinner Time since it was a Jake the Snake Roberts move. But I'm not sure what it stands for. 
It's also a chemical. It was a chemical compound as well. And there it is. Lena Vega has that body locked. Ruby Riot not able to figure out how to get that. Well, there you go. Just throw some elbows. Those elbows able to get Zelina Vega out of that lock. And there's a drop kick from Zelina. What's up, Cries of Mankind? Uh, what not it? Uh, uh, yes. Colorless, tasteless, and almost odorless crystalline chemical compound. Uh, this is the other thing that I thought DDT stood for. And there's a drop kick that Zelina Vega blocks. And a forearm from Ruby Riot to Zelina Vega. And Riot with a series of stomps. And she's waiting for Zelina Vega to get to her feet. What does Riot have planned here? Well, there it is, the Riot kick. That's all she wrote. And she picks Vega up, but misses the second Riot kick. Doesn't miss the drop kick, but it's not enough to put Zelina Vega out. Vega sidesteps that, that forearm. Irish went from Vega to Ruby. And that knee from Zelina Vega. My Lord. Missing a missile drop kick does Zelina Vega. Ruby Riot back in control. And there's a stomp. I always thought as a kid and as a young teenager, even like way after the fact, I always thought DDT stood for Damien's Dinner Time. That was the name of Jake the Snake, Robert Snake. He, it was his finishing move. I just always thought it, may, it always made sense. But I don't think it has an official name. I don't think it has a meaning. And there's a headbutt. Vega on the canvas there, but there's an arm drag from Zelina. Zelina Vega, big move coming. And another Hurricane Rana DDT from Zelina. What an incredible opening match on NGW Shockwave. That Zelina, oh, I thought Zelina had it there. I thought Zelina picked up that victory. I almost caught it too early. I apologize, folks. I, and I think it, it most likely doesn't. I'm sure if you ask, there's like a million different answers for that. Hey, Ron Jackman is joined the Bad Guy Club. As the newest member of the club, you receive a pair of sunglasses, a switchblade, and a leather jacket. So thank you for joining the Baddest Club on Twitch TV. And remember to stay bad because being bad is fun. Well, how would it be named after a snake? His snake wasn't named DDT. That only accounts for one of the D's. I did see a trailer for WWE 2K22, man, but I'm going to be honest. I got to see gameplay footage. I don't care how the game looks. If the game doesn't play well, I don't want to. I'm not going to. I don't care. Spinning back elbow that blocked. Ruby Riot blocks it. And there's a knee from Riot. Damien's Death Trap? I thought it was Damien's Dinner Time. I've never heard Damien's Death Trap. And a tilt-a-whirl. DDT from Ruby Riot. And there's a knee from Riot to Zelina Vega. But a super kick blocked by Zelina, and Zelina with an elbow to the knee. Man, I did not utilize uh, create a finisher in any of the games. What all I miss? Uh, you missed a really good zero gravity match between Callisto and Johnny Gargano. And a forearm from Ruby Riot just flooring Zelina Vega. My lord. Why isn't Ruby Riot looking for a finish here? I don't think it is. I think that's something that like we as wrestling fans have have just decided. But I don't think it ever had an, an official name. It never had an official meaning. And a drop kick.
I am really pumped for that AEW game, but I'm also skeptical for it too, you know? Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, the rumors abound as to what the letters need he supposedly stood for, including Drop Dead Twice, Demonic Death Trap, Death Drop Technique, and Damien's Dinner Time after Jake's pet, pet python Damien. But there was never like an official there was never an official meaning for that move. Selena Vega. Kick to the midset. I gotta change Ruby Wright's finisher because I think for some reason she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to go for a pin after the riot kick. I think she wants to go for a senton of some sort. I don't know why. I thought I changed it, but she's still doing it. They did. They sure did. Uh, they, um, I don't know when they stopped getting, uh, getting involved in the, uh, she's going to get, she's going to get counted out here. My God, a hurricane run into the still steps. Can you believe that? And there's a cravat. Jesus, just dropping Ruby Riot on her neck. They both got counted out. No win for either one of these ladies. We're probably not going to use Ruby Riot anymore until I can get her. Um, I need to get her move sorted out. Because she's for some reason, the AI gets dummy dummy when it comes to Riot. All right, so that's two no contests for Ruby Riot. That's one no contest for uh, for uh, Ruby Riot or for uh, Selena Vega. Okay, we cut. Uh, so we cut backstage where the conquest Tony Storm and Shayna Baszler they announce themselves for the Battlefield Battle Royal. Remember that Battlefield pay per view is going to be on Thursday, folks. It's going to be one for the ages. And that takes us to our next match, which I believe is Tyler Breeze versus Aleister Black. I forgot when Yukes got uninvolved with those games. I think it had, it had to be well before WWE 2K15, though, right? Yeah, they weren't. I don't think they had anything to do with WWE 2K15. Oh, no, they did. They did develop it. Wow. So then I guess it. When did they. Did they really drop it with 2K20? Who do you really blame for those games? The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Yeah, they're awful. <laughs> and there's Tyler Breeze making his debut in NGW. No, Ukes were they were involved with 2K15. I think Ukes has actually been involved with every game. Uh Stopping with uh, 2K20. Uh, yeah, because Yukes were, they developed 2K19 as well. That's one of the problems because they've been using that same, they've been using the same Yukes engine. Yeah, they developed, the, yeah, they did develop 2K20. Holy crap, I thought they dropped, I really thought they dropped uh, them a long time ago. I was wrong. No, it's 2K. It's 2K that has the uh, license for 2K games. Visual concepts, whatever the hell. Who cares? They're making trash games. They're making games I don't like, man. It shit need to be finished. They should have finished it before putting it out. Yeah, no, I agree. But I, I feel like the WWE games have always been like that. The 2K games have always kind of felt like they weren't completed games. It was like there, there was always a rare game that came out that felt like, okay, they really put their work, they really put their effort into this. Like um, 2K16... I think WWE 2K14 was pretty good. WWE 12 was pretty good. Are they really? What I what is? I gotta see some more of that AEW. I gotta go back and look at the AEW game footage. I like the models for Hikaru Shida and Kenny Omega. They both look great. Yeah, this game looks pretty legit, man. Man, this game looks dope. Just based on images. When is this game planned to come out, though? And there's Alistair Black making his debut in NGW. I don't remember when this game's supposed to come out. Well, I don't... I, 
I don't know what battleground was, but that game definitely didn't need to happen. And Alistair Black is a dangerous striker making his way to NGW, his first match in NGW. I need to see a hard release date. Jesus, I'm getting worn out, y'all. Yeah, they have they had they had a small trailer they played. Alistair Black's pretty legit, man. I really enjoyed his work in NXT. His he had a street fight with Adam Cole that I think I, if you guys have uh, Peacock, I don't know what's all on Peacock and what isn't, but if that takeover where Alistair Black and Adam Cole had a street fight is on there, you guys should watch it. Mike Quackenbush. There's a name I've not heard in a long time. I've had friends who've trained with Mike Quackenbush. There's a really dope match from IWA. Mike Quackenbush against Claudio Castagnoli. That match is so good. That was actually how I saw Cesaro. That was the first time I really saw Cesaro was in that match. And then I didn't really follow him again. I think the next time I saw Cesaro, he was in uh, ROH with uh, Chris Hero back when he had hair. And Tyler, ba Tyler Breeze here starting with a headlock that Alistair. Oh, what a kick to the head dropping Tyler Breeze. Key, I'll tell you what. I would like to see GMO come back. I would like to see that come back. Uh, look at those strikes from Alistair Black. I would like GMO to come back, and I would also I want a better universe mode. I want a universe mode where I can pick the winners of my matches without simulating. I want to be able to put a match together and say this is who I would like to win, and then see how the match plays out in the game. It's it, I just universe mode is super misleading because they tell you that you can do whatever, but then it's not really sandbox. Like, you can only have six official titles defended on the show. I also don't like the brand. Why can't, why can't my one show, like, okay, let's say I want, one, I want one company. I don't want a brand split. Why can't my one show have two major shows every week? And there's a roll-up from Tyler Breeze that Alistair Black's able to kick out of. If I could get a game that was a combination of Total Extreme Wrestling and uh, let's say like SmackDown, I would never buy another wrestling game. That would be until the, unless that game made a sequel. A game where you could book and run a company and put together storylines and angles and then you determine the match outcomes and you could plan the matches out, but then you also got to see like AI play your match. And there's a choke from Alice. No, Alice are able to throw Tyler Breeze. And a spinning knee there catches Tyler Breeze flush on the chin. I miss out of the, how nutty. Dude, do you remember? Was it. What was that one game? Uh, was it. Uh, was it SmackDown versus Raw 08 or 07 where Candace Michelle had that wand? And she turned your wrestler into, like, if you were playing a male wrestler, she turned you into a woman. She just, like, did one of these. and Y'all remember that? Or am, I, or am I the only one who remembers that weird shit? I've not tried Universe Simulations in, 20, in uh, WWE 2K13. Or was it WWE 13? I hated that game. That was the game where I really felt like the AI was super fixed. Oh, there were so many. Let's, let's talk about the multitude of issues I had with WWE 13. First off. The wrestlers either kicked out at one or you got a three count. There were no two counts in that game. That was annoying. And then when they reported that bug to that um, the community rep, Aubrey, I think was his name, and he kept telling everyone it wasn't a bug and they were playing the game wrong, that rubbed me all the wrong way, man. I was super glad when he stopped, when he was no longer, a, uh, he was no longer the uh, community liaison. Because that guy, dude, I swear... You would report some major issues with the games, and he would tell you, oh, no, that's not, that's not an issue. It's not an issue that the AI isn't kicking out of a two-count. 
Are you kidding me? You pretty much knew how the match would go. There's a forearm from Tyler Breeze. Not to mention the AI would leave the ring all the time and go do the, uh, they would do the OMG through the barricade. I actually had a, uh, one of my uh, shows, one of my universe shows, literally, literally, I had a Monday Night Raw in that universe where all five matches on Raw in it in double count out because they kept, they, all five matches, they crashed through the barricade. I was super disappointed in that game, especially with how good WWE 12 was. 12 was fantastic. And then that POS came out, man. Don't even get me started. Tyler Black, or Alistair Black with getting a, a, a foot under the rope there, hand under the rope. Able to break that pin up. Irish whip. Tyler Breeze getting sent to the outside. Alistair Black all over him, follows him right out there. And there's a kick to the midsection. We've seen some really educated striking from Alistair Black in this match. And Tyler Bate able to fight back, though. And what a beautiful Michinoku driver on the outside of the ring. Oh, my God, dude. The AI in WWE 13 love going outside of the ring. I hated it. If you guys think this game is bad, because this game is really bad with the AI leaving the ring, 13 was a million times worse. You would, it would be like one out of every 10 matches ended in the ring. The rest were double count outs. It got, it, okay, it got so bad. It got so bad that I had to turn ring, out, ring outs off in the game. And I've never done that for a wrestling game before. I had to turn them off. You know how annoyed I was? And wait, up, oh, Breeze kick, into the, kick to the leg there from Breeze. And another spinning knee. From Alistair Black that just drops Tyler Breeze. And Black looking for a pinfall here. Tyler Breeze able to kick out a one. Breeze, a former NXT tag team champion. But Black, a former NXT world champion or NXT champion. It normally takes a terrible game for the next WWE game to be good. That's usually the philosophy. That's what, and, and you know what? That was with 2K and THQ. THQ was a little worse, though, than 2K. Did you guys feel that too? And there's a two kick, our two count, that unprettier from Tyler Breeze. And, oh, what a beautiful elbow from Tyler Breeze, dropping Alistair Black in the canvas. And a knee strike from Breeze. Alistair Black hasn't been able to recover from that kill switch, that unprettier. And Breeze on that middle rope. Sunset flip. We got a pin. No, he lets go. It was the sunset bomb. And there's an elbow. My favorite setup is a pin and submit battle royal. I remember when, dude, cries of mankind. How are you just now joining the stream? You've missed me go on rants about that. I want a Royal Rumble in this game where you can throw people over the top rope as well as pin, submit, and knock them out to eliminate them. The THQ games back on Nintendo 64 had that format. You could do it on No Mercy. You could do it on WrestleMania 2000. Why the hell can you not do it on any other game? They really limited your controls on these newer ones, and I don't like that. Black with a two count. Prince Pretty has looked really good in this match so far, but now Black is getting back in control. Oh, No Mercy Story Mode was great. I like how each title had a different story. And I liked... Man, I that's okay. So this is gonna be one of those like nerdy things. So NGW is a promotion that I used to. NGW comes from a uh, an EWR promotion. I don't know if you guys have heard of EWR. It's called Extreme Wrestling Revenge, and it's a booking simulator. It's all text based, but you run a promotion, and that was a match that I came up. So NGW was my was the name of my promotion on Extreme Warfare Revenge. And one of our matches was Battlefield. And Battlefield is a Royal Rumble that has pinfall submissions, and knockouts. Alistair Black picking up a big victory over Tyler Breeze tonight. And I'm telling you, if I'm in that locker room, there's someone I'm paying attention to. Alistair Black. Very dominant. Very educated feat. Tyler Breeze had a great performance but wasn't able to pull it off tonight. Let's make a career. Well, it's not EA. 
it's 2K. And back then it was THQ and Ukes and AKI. Something like that. The camera cuts backstage after that match, and we have a split screen backstage segment. It's Kenny Omega and Jungle Boy preparing for the main event in their separate locker rooms. And then we get another Brooklyn Von Braun hype promo. The former mixed martial artist will be making her debut soon in NGW. Good night, Awesome Sword. Thanks for hanging out and talking pro wrestling with me. Always appreciate it. And also, thanks for the bits, man. That was awesome of you. Very kind. If you guys aren't sub to the Bad Guy Maddox Twitch channel, you guys should sub. I have super cute emotes. Uh, we're awesome. You get a little pizza icon next to your name. We also, we're going to bring back movie night and anime night on our channel and do some stuff with that. You have to admit the, well, I, okay, I'm going to be for real with you, Cries. I've not played, I'm not going to play 2K. I'm not, I don't play the 2K career modes. I played the 2K16 career mode and absolutely hated it. And that was the only career mode I've played since uh, probably SMA, or since WWE 12. All right, Keaton, you out of here too, man? Our next match, Umberto Carrillo versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And Carrillo's kind of had an up-and-down career in NGW so far. He's won, he's won some, he's lost some. He's, he's trying to make it happen. Carrillo is actually decent, not going to lie. The dialogue can be true. I'm, I'm good. That's one of those things, man. I hate to say it. I'm going to take your word for it. I don't, I'm not playing no damn career mode in these games. 1980s exaggerated that does not sound good that does not sound like something i want to play you know my back over here killing me ever watch mlw i've seen a, i've seen a handful of shows yes uh i'm not the biggest fan i think the production for the for the talent that they bring in it's crazy how poor that production is and there's Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't think Shinsuke has a win in NGW yet. And this could this actually could be a pretty fun match. Shinsuke versus Umberto Carrillo. Used to work for MLW. That's hype, dude. That's hype. I've been trying to like get into the producing aspect of pro wrestling. I would love to write or oh, you're talking like the older MLW run. Back when they had guys like Masato Tanaka. I didn't even know they were around in 2011. Were they? Let's look these cats up. I don't follow Major League Wrestling. I know, I know they're, they would. I don't know how you could have worked for them 10 years ago. Because they closed. The first time they closed was in 2004, and they didn't come back until 2017. They did have the radio. They brought the radio. Net, yeah, so they had the MLW Radio Network in 2011. And that's what, that's how uh, uh, Bruce Pritchard, all those Conrad shows took off, man. They were all on there. Ten plus years ago. So, I mean, that, that would have been 2004. It would have been way more than ten years. We're, so, you're, we're talking at this point close to 20. Who are their champions right now? Is it still Jacob Fatu? Yep. And the Carrillo has that hammer lock, and Shinsuke reverses it and takes control of the hammer lock himself. This is going to be an interesting mix of styles here. Shinsuke, the king of strong style. Carrillo, uh, uh, probably the next generation of luchadors, in my opinion, with a nice sit-out powerbomb from Carrillo. Shinsuke has the wherewithal to know where the rope is. And he misses the kick. That allows Shinsuke to pick Carrillo up and dropping him right over the knee neck first. My lord. And there's a kick that's blocked. Carrillo tripping Shinsuke Nakamura up. He picks Shinsuke up. And he goes to work on that arm, dropping him with that shoulder breaker. And there's an arm bar from Carrillo. And Shinsuke's right at that rope. I don't know why he's not grabbing the rope for submission. It doesn't matter because Carrillo lets go. And another Fujiwara armbar, this time Shinsuke getting the rope. 
Carrillo is not letting up on Shinsuke after that power slam. And a jumping DDT plant Shinsuke. Just dropped him head first on that canvas. And Carrillo going to work on that shoulder, going right back on the attack. Very methodical wrestler is Humberto Carrillo. We've seen him have his ups and downs in NGW so far. He was aiming for that zero gravity title, and he unfortunately just couldn't pick up the big wins when it mattered. And now he's facing Shinsuke, and this match is standard rules. This is not a zero gravity rules match, ladies and gentlemen. Shinsuke not in that division. This could have major implications for the TV title, however, as Carrillo there, tilt a whirl, descending Shinsuke Nakamura flying. So let me figure out how to make Becky Lynch in UFC 4. That's kind of dope. I've yet, I've yet to play that game, man. I've not played any UFC game other than the first one since EA took over. I didn't. I couldn't get into that first UFC game, so I never played another one. And now I just think the idea of paying 60 bucks for an MMA game is absurd. Give me another fight night. I want a fight night. Those are my games. Kick to the midsection. Even though I thought, I think Fight Night Champion was a little poor. That game was, I think Fight Night Champion was too pay to win. And that kind of broke that game for me. And Shinsuke just teeing off on Carrillo with those strikes. Carrillo blocks. And we get him locked up again. And there's an Irish whip. That Carrillo blocks the kick from Shinsuke. A sweep followed by a standing moonsault. What a beautiful moonsault from Carrillo. And an Irish whip from Carrillo to Shinsuke. And there's a punch. Shinsuke saw it coming, though. Dude, I want a Def Jam Vendetta. I preferred that over Fight for New York because I like the more traditional wrestling elements. But Fight for New York was a lot of fun too, man. That last, the whatever was the most recent one was a Def Jam icon, man. That game wasn't so great. And a beautiful suplex from Shinsuke. Carrillo in trouble. Shinsuke going for a cover here. And Carrillo able to kick out. Carrillo able to kick out. Oh, you don't have to apologize. What up, Witch Doctor? King Shasa! The Bubaye from Shitsuke Nakamura. Your match is actually on Thursday. And a strike that Shitsuke blocks. Carrillo, kick, DDT. And beautiful. Oh, look at that tilt. Look at that head scissors from Carrillo. Beautiful. Beautiful tilt the world head scissors. And Carrillo going right back to work on Shinsuke's shoulder again. He's just not letting off that shoulder. I don't know what's going on there. Where we've not really known Carrillo to be a submission specialist since being in NGW. But a clothesline floors Shinsuke Nakamura and a drop kick to the back. Shinsuke is a former NXT champion, a former Intercontinental champion, and a former United States champion. Carrillo picking up a win tonight in NGW would be huge. And you have to think these guys are eyeing. Oh, uh, what's Carrillo got planned here? What's Carrillo got? Look at that headstand. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. What a springboard moonsault. We've seen that before. I can never get enough of that move. And Humberto Carrillo picking up a big win over Shinsuke. So Carrillo is now three and two. Shinsuke is 0 oh and two. There's Tada. So after the match, Womble's gone, but still, after the match, we go backstage with Jeff Hardy for an interview. And Jeff Hardy basically addresses what he did and why he did it, helping Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels against Disrespect No More. This is what Jeff Hardy has to say. I will never compromise who I am just to get ahead in this industry. Disrespect No More approached me with an offer to join with them. Well, if my, last mess, if my message last week wasn't loud and clear, then how about this? Kiss my ass. Wow. What words there. 
So that takes us to our next match, which is Tamina versus Raquel Gonzalez. I really like this Tamina or this Raquel Gonzalez CAW. I think she looks really good. There are some CAWs in this game that I like. I see them, and my instant thought is, why aren't these guys help? Why, why aren't why aren't these guys getting hired to help make this game? When you have CAWs who look better than in-game models, like that Raquel, have you guys seen Tyler or Trent Seven in this game? And there's Tamina. Tamina looking to make a statement. Came up short against Britt Baker, losing to Britt Baker about two or three weeks ago. Her first loss in NGW, and she's looking for an immediate rebound back. And Tamina has been nothing but impressive since joining NGW. And that's going to be someone to look out for in that Battlefield Battle Royal coming up at Battlefield Japan. Say battle three times. How many times can you say battle in a single sentence, right? I don't know what her entrance looks like because we didn't get to see it last time, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think we got to see it last time. This is her theme song, though, really? She could have a better theme song. And Raquel Gonzalez looking to rebound from her previous loss. Who did she lose to last time? I don't remember. Let's find out. Wanting to rebound. Oh, she lost to Trish Stratus. That's not a bad loss. You're going to lose lose to, Tr lose, lose to Trish. Looking to rebound from her loss to Trish Stratus. She's 0-1 and one in NGW. And by the way, Raquel Gonzalez will also be in the Battlefield Battle Royal as well. I'm telling you, there are a lot of potential winners in that Battle Royal. It's hard to say who's going to make it to the final two. Just too many dominant athletes. Harpy just typing, yeah, kiss his ass. You're going to join that kiss my ass club. And Raquel Gonzalez, power slam on Tamina, picking her up and just effortlessly sliding her over for that slam. And a hurricane Rana, Raquel, showing that athleticism, able to jump up and just drop Tamina with the hurricane Rana. But Tamina able to fighting back, clotheslining Raquel. Trying to regain control of this match. And Tamina picks up Raquel. Samoa drop. And there's an eye rake from Raquel. Look how much, even though we've talked about Tamina being one of the most dominant, one of the most physically impressive women in NGW, look at the size difference between her and Raquel Gonzalez as Raquel drops Tamina with a short arm clothesline. And there's an, oh, my God, what a chop from Raquel to Tamina. Tamina firing the right arm, though, able to fight back. And there's an elbow that staggers Raquel, eventually dropping her to the canvas. And Tamina, what's Tamina? Oh, my God, Tamina picking her up. And a power bomb. And like I said, this is another battle of the Titans. You could put these two in New York City and it would be like watching Kong versus Godzilla. Two big gargantuan women, athletically impressive, dominant women in NGW. One on one here. And we've seen a lot of power offense from both ladies in this match. Tamina though firing with a strike there, right hand to the face. And she picks up Raquel and another Samoan drop. My goodness. The strength of Tamina. And there's a dragon screw from Raquel. Damn, dude. How's, what, what is this paper on? And a forearm just dropping Tamina. Tamina having to roll to the outside. Raquel chasing behind her. And Tamina with a drop kick that sends Raquel into the ring. And Raquel just bounces right back up. And a chop from Tamina. Ruby Riot. Needs a win. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. I'm just thinking about Ruby Riot. That's a, what she's definitely gonna need to win in NGW. You have to think she's probably looking at this match because you know you go oh, just throwing Raquel 
there's a very real possibility that Riot will, will be looking at facing the loser of this match. And if I'm Riot, wait a minute, and wait, Raquel throwing Tamina back into the ring. And elbow drop to the lower back from Raquel Gonzalez. Tamina is hurting, reeling there from that elbow. But there's a fireman's carry from Tamina. Tamina taking control. Irish whips in and Raquel to the corner. And when Raquel bounces back, Tamina picks her up for a backbreaker and just stretches her over that knee. You do not want to get stretched out that way. It's going to require a visit to the chiropractor the next morning. Dude, I need to play some Apex Legends. I don't know if I want to stay up after I'm done streaming. I'm kind of tired. Wait a minute. And Tamina on that top rope. With a Samoan drop, I might throw down on some Rainbow Six. I don't know what it is about that game, but I've recently gotten hooked on it, man. And a devastating head, but I just wish the freaking operators were free. I don't like that you have to use it. You have to, it's basically, it's a $60 League of Legends. That's so annoying. League of Legends can get away with you having to pay for your characters because the game is free and you, you really, you honestly earn their in-game currency pretty quickly. Damn, what a falcon arrow there from Tamina. And Raquel able to kick out. It just bugs me um, that you paid $60 for that game and then you still have to pay for uh, characters. And they've released a shit ton of characters in that game. Hopefully the next time they do a Rainbow Six, if they're going to do that, the game just needs to be free. The season pass to get all the characters is more than the base game. What? There's a pin from Raquel. I guess the solution is just to play mad hours. Play for triple, triple digit hours. Oh my god, and Raquel picking. What? A, oh, a dominator from Raquel! And there's a cover! And Tamina gets a shoulder up, my lord. Raquel can't believe it. Raquel beside herself. Can't believe Tamina was able to kick out of that. And there's this clothesline. Wait, overhead toss from Raquel. Tamina back to her feet. Picked up, spine buster. And an Irish whip just sending Tamina into the corner there. Tamina able to fight out, though. A kick that Raquel blocks. And a tackle. And look at Raquel just firing off those right hands on Tamina. And she picks Tamina up one more time. And another dominator. That has to be it. And it is Raquel Gonzalez picking up a big win tonight in NGW. Jesus, that was actually, dude. I don't know if it's the, if it's the settings, but the matches are actually kind of on point. They've been a lot better. Damn, dude. Tamina went from being two and zero to two and two. How sad. How sad. Okay. So. What do we have? What am I doing here? Uh, basically, there's an announcement after this match. And the announcement is that we have The Bar defending the tag team titles against Kofi Kingston and Ray Phoenix. That match will be next week on NGW? Hold on. I think it's next week. Yeah, it's going to be next week on NGW. So the first Thursday. So the first Thursday. What up? I am too dumb for you. What's up, boy? How you living? Congrats on the win, man. 5-1. Oh, wait. You guys are 4-3, and three, but you had a, you won 5-1. That's awesome, dude. So now we go to our main event. The NGW World Title Match. Kenny Omega defends the NGW World Championship against Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy? Jungle Boy?
Tada, you ain't getting no tattoo stop. What you need to get is a dub in Apex Legends. Or pick up Borderlands 3 for 10 bucks so I have someone to play that with. Since Simple Surmise did me dirty. Man, if Jungle Boy wins this match, Nacho Mac is. I'm, she's going to be pumped. Why is his? Why are they so bad at designing hair in this game? Wait, how did you? Because Jungle Boy is number one. <laughs> He's number one ranked. That's why. That's the thing. Like, I want to go ahead and let that be known. He's number one by default, by the way. It's not like he climbed, 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 climbed up the ladder. Carry and Cross got knocked off, and when Carry and Cross got knocked off, um. And Jungle Boy was basically, he got knocked off number one. Jungle Boy got, took the number one spot. And that's, that's the other reason why Kenny Omega is like so just dissing Jungle Boy. But Jungle Boy's been putting in the work. I mean, he beat Christian. He's beat, he has some good wins. And Jungle Boy is a significant underdog here, as a matter of fact. Let's go ahead and turn that into a prediction. Our, fir our first and only prediction of the night. And my favorite entrance in this game, Kenny Omega. Let's get some predictions going. We're going to see what the odds are. The I I'm telling you the odds are in favor of Kenny Omega. Jungle Boy is a massive underdog in this match. And there he is, that cocky Kenny Omega with Ted DiBiase in his corner. He calls himself the best athlete on the planet. And just look at him. You are not defending the title at Battlefield because you're going to be in the Battlefield Battle Royal. No, this is for the title, Craig. This is for the NGW World title. Hold on, I gotta type this promo. And it really is so refreshing, Michael. I wish more superstars had the same level of respect that he clearly has. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, I got okay, I got my promo written. <laughs> And there's a spinning back kick from Omega. You are defending the title on sh yeah, exactly. That's why you're that's why you're facing Triple H at Shockwave. That's why you're facing Triple H on Shockwave because you I'm trying to have there's not going to be as many matches on Battlefield Japan as there normally are on other pay-per-views. I think there's 5 matches on Battlefield Japan whereas other pay-per-views are 7 matches. And Omega Omega taking control of this match already. No, he misses that step up in Zaguri. And Jungle Boy able to get a kick to the ribs. But look at that unpopular Truth 44 is joined the Bad Guy Club. As the newest member of the club, you receive a pair of sunglasses, a switchblade, and a leather jacket. So thank you for joining the Baddest Club on Twitch TV. And remember to stay bad because being bad is fun. And there's a rock bottom from Kitty Omega. He's been doing that to mock the rock. He calls himself the god of professional wrestling. He, there's just no, he knows no bounds. His disrespect knows no bounds. And look at him just dragging Jungle Boy. Just taking it. And again, we call Jungle Boy a huge underdog in this match. And Omega is not taking. He, he's, just, he's just punishing a Jungle Boy here. But wait, C4 from Jungle Boy. What a counter. Just like that Jungle Boy back in the match. And a nice head scissors takeover. Omega rolls out of the ring and Jungle Boy chases right behind him. Jungle Boy trying to win that title tonight. And a running hurricane Rana. Jungle Boy still in control. And there's a kick to the leg. Omega blocks the second kick, though. We have a match here, folks. There's a, oh, a Delta World backbreaker. 
And look at Omega. Ted is wearing a suit. I fixed it. And look at him with another gut rich sit out power bomb on the outside of the ring. He told Jungle Boy they were having a wrestling match and he meant it as he throws Jungle Boy back into the ring. But Jungle Boy waiting for Kenny Omega and a DDT, beautiful planning Kenny Omega. And look at Jungle Boy totting there. Crowd in favor of Jungle Boy. And there's a clothesline from Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy channeling his inner Tarzan. Just all over Omega. And Omega back in control. Again, it's nothing for Omega. Omega said this match is nothing for him. And there's a block from oh, Jungle Boy to Kenny. Uh, so Cedric and the Disrespect No More try to recruit Jeff Hardy. And what is oh, Ted DiBiase getting involved here? Just shouting at Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy needs to keep his eyes on Kenny because Kenny Omega able to roll him up. And there's a... No! A, Kenny Omega just stole a victory there. Okay, I'm working with that. I am working with that. So, thanks to Ted DiBiase's interference, Kenny Omega is able to retain the title. And Omega starts a... T yeah, there we go. Perfect. This is perfect. So Omega starts beating the hell out of Jungle Boy. Just like this. Beating the hell out of him. And Johnny Gargano comes out from the back. Rushes to the ring. And he starts popping right hands at Kenny Omega. Omega can't stop him. Johnny Gargano is hitting him too fast. Johnny Gargano just, just keeps hitting Omega and eventually hits him with a clothesline. It sends Kenny Omega toppling over the top rope into the floor. Teddy Biasi and Kenny Omega gather their thoughts. Kenny Omega shocked. He's surprised. They don't get back in that ring. Gargano picks up a microphone and he's fired up. And this is what, Gar this is what Gargano has to say. Week in and week out, we put our asses on the line to entertain this crowd. And I'll be damned if I'm going to let you disrespect the Zero Gravity Division. You call Jungle Boy a joke wrestler. You call him a garbage wrestler. And he tagged your number. In fact, it took that billionaire Ted to interfere and uh, help you win the match. So you know what? I've had enough of your disrespect, Kenny Omega. You think the Zero Gravity Division's trash? You think we're a joke? Why don't you prove it? Next week, why don't we have ourselves a little champion versus champion? The Zero Gravity Champion against you, the NGW World Champion. Or are you just too afraid to accept? And Kenny Omega is stunned at what Johnny Gargano has to say. And he gets the microphone. And Kenny Omega, he fires back. He says, you know what? Fine. I'll, t I'll take that match. I'll take that match. And you know what? Since I am the god of pro wrestling, since I am the best damn athlete on the planet, I'm going to beat you in your little zero gravity rules match. We're gonna, I'm going to run off walls. I'm going to do front flips off the stage. I'm going to do back flips off tables. Why not? I'm going to beat you in your own match and show you how good the god of pro wrestling is. But why stop with false count anywhere? Why stop with false count anywhere at zero gravity? Let's throw all the rules out of the table. I want to hit you with the chair. I want to put you through that table. I want you to bleed, Johnny. So you know what? We'll do it. Champion versus champion. NGW world champion versus NGW zero gravity champion in a zero gravity extreme rules match. And that concludes our show so on our next shockwave on thursday stream it will be kenny omega versus johnny gargano zero gravity no holds barred we'll see you then guys thanks for watching ngw shockwave